And let's bring in Law and Crime Network host and legal analyst Terry Austin for more on the trial and what we can expect today. Terry, good morning. Thanks for being here. I'd like to first get your take on how yesterday went, starting with the opening statements. The prosecution laid out their case that Derek Chauvin used excessive force against George Floyd and that that excessive force is what killed George Floyd. On the flip side, the defense laid out their case that Chauvin did exactly as he was trained, that the officers were distracted from caring for Floyd because they felt threatened by the angry crowd of bystanders, and that ultimately Floyd died from a combination of his heart condition, drug use, and adrenaline, not the knee on his neck. What did you think of those competing statements? I thought actually the prosecution did a great job. Jerry Blackwell laid it all out. He used phrases like that Chauvin did not let up, he did not get up, and he did not do that until someone told him to do that, even though he knew that Floyd had no pulse, that he wasn't moving, that he wasn't resisting. So I thought the prosecution did an excellent job. He laid out the fact that it wasn't anything to do with drugs. It had nothing to do with his heart. The reason George Floyd died was because Chauvin had his knee on Floyd's neck. I thought that Eric Nelson did a decent job. He at least explained some of the issues to the jury, and he tried to say that there was drugs in his system, fentanyl, and he was explaining that there was a heart condition, but I think it's hard to get around that video. I also think that he made a mistake in trying to say that the crowd diverted Chauvin's attention from caring for Floyd. I don't think that went over well. So if I had to grade each of the openings, I would give Jerry Blackwell an A plus. I would give Nelson maybe a B. I think overall the prosecution did a much better job. It seemed almost as if Blackwell anticipated that argument on behalf of the defense, though, by showing an image of the bystanders. It seemed like he was trying to prep the viewers and the jury to see, you know, does this crowd look threatening to you in a way? Um, but the prosecution, as you mentioned, they also wasted no time showing that disturbing video of the incident as, and, and laying it out before showing the video, explaining to all of us that you're going to see Floyd lose consciousness. You're going to hear him begging for his life. You're going to hear him saying he can't breathe. And as you said, repeatedly pointing out through all of this, nine minutes and 29 seconds, Derek Chauvin doesn't get up and doesn't let up. So it seems like this will be the most difficult piece of evidence for the defense to counter in this case. There's no question that video is going to be hard to counter, and that is the reason why Eric Nelson should have said something more about the video. He should have said, look, this is difficult. We mentioned this the other day, that he should have said something about the fact that this video is going to be hard to tolerate, and he didn't do that. One of the things I think a good attorney can do at trial is to make sure the jury understands, look, there are points that will be in favor of my client. And there are points that will not help my client. And you have to address that head on. And clearly the world saw that video and Nelson failed to set that up so that the jury understands, look, it's hard to tolerate, but here's our explanation for what you are seeing. And he failed to do that. Yeah, no matter how many times you see that video, it is difficult to watch it and not have some kind of emotional reaction. Um, but uh, for the prosecution, it seems their biggest challenge is going to be cause of death. We heard both sides talk about that yesterday. The medical examiner has already said that he can't say for sure that Floyd would not have died without that knee on his neck. So how do they prove that Chauvin played a big enough role to be guilty of murder or manslaughter without that finding by the medical examiner? You know, I think we'll have to see what the physicians say when they get on the stand, but I like the fact that one of the things Blackwell did was explain, these are the movements, the motions, this is what you saw in the video, and this is what we call, from a medical standpoint, you know, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. You will see that he's having this reaction because the air is not going to his lungs. You will see that because you saw flow, Floyd move in a certain direction. That's because he's trying to get air back into his lungs. So I think we saw Blackwell do a pretty good job explaining the medical evidence and explaining the fact that had it not been for that knee, Floyd wouldn't have died. He absolutely admitted, and I think this was excellent and the jury probably appreciated, the fact that yes, he had fentanyl in his system and yes, he's had a heart condition for a number of years, but none of those things killed him. 
what killed him was the pressure on his neck. And I think when you see the actual movements in Floyd's body and the medical explanation for what is going on at every second of that video, I think the jury is going to be able to make the connection. And that's what they have to do. They have to make the connection that no matter what else was in his system, no matter what condition his body was in in terms of his heart, it was that knee on the neck that killed him. And I think the opening that Blackwell did was excellent at pointing out, look, all of this other information is smoke and mirrors. You saw he was moving in this way because he couldn't breathe. And that was only because of the knee on the neck. Yeah, Blackwell was trying to make the argument that one of the movements we see is him having a seizure, which results from lack of oxygen. I'm sure we're going to hear more from the medical experts as they come on and testify. But we did hear from three witnesses yesterday, a 911 dispatcher who reported the incident to a sergeant after watching it live on a traffic camera, a woman who worked at the gas station across the street from where Floyd was pinned to the ground and was one of the first, it seems, to start recording the incident. And then another bystander trained in martial arts. We saw him on the video in Alex's piece, and he repeatedly insists on that day, you can hear him on the bystander video, insisting with the officers to get off of Floyd. How important do you think their testimony was yesterday? Well, I think two out of three of those witnesses were excellent. I think Jenna Lee Scurry, who was the 911 <laughs> operator, she was important. She was important because when she looked and saw that the officers were holding down George Floyd for so long, she said, in fact, I thought my screen had frozen. And I think that's an important statement. It surprised her that it was so long. And that is, in fact, why she called the sergeant to ask, look, I'm not sure what's going on. I don't want to be a snitch or anything, but this doesn't look right. She said her instincts kicked in. So I think it was important to call her as a first witness because here you have not just a bystander, but you have a police operator, a 911 dispatcher, someone who is familiar with authorities. And even she thought something was wrong. So I thought that that was a good witness to put on the stand first. The second witness, I understand why the prosecution put Alicia Euler on the stand because she did have one of the first videos. But, oh my goodness, she did not want to be there and it showed. She was not listening very well. She wasn't speaking very well. She looked impatient. She had her hand on her, you know, uh, chin and didn't want to really be there. And in fact, she said, I don't really want to be here. And so I don't think that the jury will take her information and do much with it because she was so cavalier about the whole situation. And frankly, her, her video wasn't that insightful, if you ask me. I thought some of it was blurry. Some of it was through the reflection of from where she was positioned. And so I might not have used her particularly since she didn't want to be there and her attitude showed and the jury is going to pick up on that as far as the third witness donald williams was excellent and he will continue as we've already reported today but he not only witnessed most of what occurred but he has all of this expertise as far as a martial arts expert and he understands what a blood hole is and he understands what pressure to the neck will do. And the judge allowed much of that information into the evidence. And so I think that he's going to be a pivotal witness for the jury. Yeah, there were some technical difficulties toward the end of the day that cut the live feed. So they cut the day short. But we will hear again from Daryl Williams today, as you mentioned, Terry. Terry Austin, it's great to have you. Thanks for the analysis. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.